Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you a cute pendant using a Skinner blend and a layered silk screen effect. So we'll start with the silk with the uh, Skinner blend first. So what I've got here is I've got All Prima, I've got Ecru, Blush and Ultramarine and this one is a half and half mix of Ultramarine and Black. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take those just going to pop them together like this and you might find that see that they're not all equal uh, triangles that's perfectly fine I'm not too worried about that okay and then let me just bring over my blade cut off the triangle there swing it around do the same on the other side take it swing it around and I'm just going to trim away uh, this excess because I don't want so much of each colour on each side. There we go. Then I'm just going to pop that through a pasta machine like you would any other silk screen. Excuse me. Uh, like any other uh, Skinner blend and I'll show you how it looks afterwards. Okay, and here is the blend. Now I didn't go all the way until it was completely blended because you can see that I have some streaks in colour, it's not completely evenly blended. That's just a personal choice because I'm going for a sunset effect here and I like having the kind of uh, varying streaks in colour, I think that adds uh, to the personality of the piece. Uh, but if you want to have a completely smooth blend, by, then by all means go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to fold it, it again. And what I want is, I've got a cutter here, and I want the entire blend to fit within that cutter. So I'll fold it up again, basically form it into almost like a tube, like so, and I'm pressing in on the ends. And then what I'll do is I'll very carefully, starting in the middle, hold one end, and then I'll take my finger and I'll push the blend in on itself. And I'm going to do that slowly and carefully, so as not to get like large ripples in the blend. And just keep doing that until it fits your cutter. Okay, and that's how far I've gone. Now I've gone a little bit inside, so the cutter uh, goes a bit further than the blend, because when I run the serve pasta machine, I'm going to want to uh, fold it and run it through once or twice, just to smooth out the blend again. So now I'll run that through the pasta machine, uh, and I'll show you how it looks. And here is how it looks straight after I've rolled it through. So you can see that I have those streaks. Which is fine, I do want some of them, but I'm going to smooth it out just a little bit by folding it uh, probably about two more times. Fold it once, roll it through, fold it again, roll it through, and then we should be good to go. Okay, and there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to bring over a piece of greaseproof paper. Plain printing paper will work too. And I'm going to bring up another piece. And I'm going to burnish this thoroughly. This is both going to smooth out the surface. But I also uh, want to cut out my piece on paper rather than on a tile. And if I don't smooth it out rather firmly onto the back piece of paper, uh, it will stick in the cutter. Uh, and the reason I want to cut it on a piece of paper rather than on the tile is because it will mean that the back texture will have a nice smooth matte finish uh, because you cut it on paper rather than if you cut it on a tile where it would leave kind of a shiny blotchy finish. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to bring over the silk screen of choice. And it's this one over here. I'll provide a link to this in the description below. And for 24 hours after this tutorial has been released uh, on YouTube, it will actually be 20% off in case you're interested. And so I'm going to start with the first uh, of the design. First of the designs. I'm just going to burnish that on. And these are stars. 
and you can use paint but I prefer to use mica powder both because it means that I don't have to clean up the silk screen between each uh, piece but also because I like how cleanly it comes out okay so I'm going to be using silver mica powder for the stars so you just grab that and just color in or just rub in the uh, mica into all of the open areas like so okay and you don't have to worry about putting the mica powder on the whole surface uh, you just need to get it in those stars the border basically is just to help you see uh, where to line up your cutter and where to line up the salt screens through this process and I'll peel that up and then because it's mica powder we don't have to worry about um, cleaning it what I do like to do between stages though is I like to take this and I like to burnish in the powder and I would do this with paint as well and this just makes sure that it's stuck down onto the clay so the silk screen doesn't accidentally lift it up later on okay then we will move on to the next one which is the boat and just line that up with the previous one like so burnish it down and move on to the next colour which is this kind of uh, antique copper colour colour that in like before and that will have taken care of the boat then you're going to lift that up like so and again burnish it in then we'll line up the screen again now depending on the silk screen design that you are using you would use a different color uh, Skinner blend obviously with this one I'm kind of going for a sunset uh, effect so depending on the screen you might want to change up the colors that you're using whether that be the mica powder or clay or both so for the clouds I'm going to go with gold and then we go burnish again and lastly, I've got these little sky rays that I am going to be colouring black. And there we go. Super easy and also super effective. Then I'm going to burnish that one last time because I am going to be putting uh, resin on this once it has baked. And if you uh, have ever used mica powders, eyeshadows, or any kind of powder on polymer clay of any kind, uh, you know that once it's baked, if it hasn't been burnished onto the clay properly, uh, you can accidentally smudge it with your finger. So I always like to burnish it down uh, so that it doesn't get smudged by either me brushing resin on or by me accidentally touching it afterwards. Okay. Then I am going to grab my cutter and I will line it up with the lines that we have printed onto the piece. Okay. Then press down firmly. Make sure you press that little middle bit as well. Okay, and now hopefully it doesn't stick in the cutter, but it's highly likely that it will, just due to the fact that we are cutting on a piece of paper. And it didn't stick completely, so I'm going to be careful when I get that out. Okay, carefully press that back down. Okay, and so, way to fix that is I'm just going to grab this very gently, going to use that to press down. That way, I don't have to worry about distorting this or uh, messing up the mica powder. Just burnish it down get it nice and stuck down and then we can clean that up and it's very easy to fix just grab your blade and just gently press on the edges and that will straighten them out and if you want to avoid this you can always just cut it on the tile and then it won't stick in the cutter it's just that I find this pretty easy to fix up and it means that I don't have to worry about sanding the back uh, later on which actually takes me more time then just cleaning this up quickly while it's raw. So anyway, whichever one you prefer. Okay, 
Okay. Then once you're happy that it's um, nice and clean and ready to go in the oven, you'll put this into the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. Uh, and you'll do it on the piece of paper, that way you'll retain a nice smooth back. Uh, and then once it's baked, we can resin it. Okay, and here it is out of the oven. And you can see that the back is nice and matte. So now I'm going to use some UV resin. You can use any gloss varnish you want. This does need to get sealed though because of the powders. If you're using paint and put the paint on the raw clay and then baked it, uh, you wouldn't need to seal it because the paints would have been baked in. Okay, I'm not going to add too much. Just going to use these to maneuver it around. Just so I'm not getting my hands in the way. And then because we burnished the uh, Oh gosh, the mica powders on, you shouldn't have to worry about them uh, moving or causing any issues while you're trying to spread the resin around. So then you'll spread the resin all around. Once that is finished, you will put it in the UV light for at least 15 minutes just to get that resin rock hard. Uh, and yeah, that will basically be pretty much it. Okay, and here it is once I take it out of the UV light. And I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Now obviously you can use paint instead of mica powders if you want. You can use any colour mica powder or any kind of silt screen you want. Also any kind of Skinner blend. So really this is very versatile uh, and has multiple different applications. So yeah, if you enjoyed the tutorial please do let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in any of the tools that I used in today's tutorial, they are 20% off at the moment for 24 hours after this tutorial is released on YouTube, so please do check that out. And if you'd like to support the channel so I can continue making videos like this one, please do consider either becoming a member on YouTube, there's a join button below the video, or becoming a patron where you get exclusive videos uh, that are generally more technical than the ones that I show on YouTube. So please do consider that uh, as it's really helpful to this channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.